if you say this to anyone who's not part of football, they're going to think you're crazy. I remember being that kid when I went to my first game. I'm trying to see the stadium and I can't see it because everyone's towering above me and I'm holding my mum's hand and she says, don't let go. I'll never, ever forget walking up the stairs and you finally get that first glimpse of the pitch. It was at that moment I knew that I have to be on that pitch one day. Fans across the country are banned from stadium as lockdown takes hold. There are bigger things than football. Football sometimes has to stop. You think back to how hard it's been on the fans, being told that you can't be there with all your friends, people that you've been through tough times, good times. It's like a family. I miss the fans so much. Just them being there, I'm telling you, it's like a, a spiritual belief, faith, raw emotion. For me, it's massive to have them back. Tens of thousands waiting to greet us. Nothing can come between us. I can't wait. What's it feel like? Everything's happening and then bam, the, the pandemic. So no fans, no football, separated from football, no fans and that. How, how do you deal with that, man? It's hard. Although we've never really had to think about it. There are bigger things than football and football sometimes has to has to stop and it did in this scenario and it's something that we had to deal with and then obviously going into lockdown and then it getting extended again three weeks it was kind of like are we ever gonna are we ever gonna play this season out obviously a lot of rumors about being cancelled and suspended and finished and we, they're just gonna leave it till next season and what's it like playing in, in the empty stadiums without the fans? You don't realise how much fans influence game plans. Like with momentum and just like the sounds and what you can hear and it was it, it was a lot it's a lot more difficult than what I thought it'd be. If our intensity's there then the fans' intensity's there and if the fans' intensity's there, so's ours. So it works hand in hand and now we've had to create that atmosphere ourselves, which is a lot more difficult because it's so special, man. All the fans there, every single game, no matter what, there's at least 10,000 fans at Anfield just waiting to watch the bus come into the stadium. It's crazy. That's what I was going to say as well. You see, with your, your love of football and where it started, what was it? What triggered it in your head? I said, I like this. But I remember being like four, five, you know, local like Astros. Yeah. And there's like... Um, little training groups going on yeah. for like under sevens, under eights on like a Saturday morning. There'd be a coach there and they'd just do little drills and play little games and stuff like that. And I remember going and I remember like stood on the fence mm. and I used to cry every time. <laughs> what were you crying for? To play. But they said I was too young. They said I was like four. And I, he must have been about eight. I must have been about four. Yeah. Like, no, you gotta wait till you're six. You gotta wait till you're six. And I remember, cause I had to go. Did you literally, was you physically like, so you had to go and you couldn't play? No. Oh my gosh, no. that was like when I was young, my dad used to have match of the day on and I couldn't watch it. How did, so what was it, so what was it like? Did you want to go then? Yeah, I used to, I used to ask every single time. I mean, I used to, I was there on my mum's hip. Please let, let me play, let me play. And, but yeah, I just had to wait and by then I was, because I was seeing what they were doing, I'd go home and, and copy it. I'd like set up like the same drills and feel as though I was part of it. And yeah. Make sure that my brother weren't doing stuff that I went. <laughs> Cause I I had that I think even at that age, I had that competitiveness. I thought if he's doing that and he's training a bit more, he's gonna be better than me and I, I can't have that happen. I wanna win. My brother teased me to just tease me and then just left me to, to wallow in my... Mm -hmm. So did you two play against each other and do oh, stuff? Oh, for years and years. And then my little brother came along and then there was three of us. And it was, it was mental. It was, it was crazy. We played football all the time. It was, it was non-stop. It was non-stop. When we get home from school, we play football on all from four till seven. What kind of games? 
just in the garden. We we play one and off, so two two against each other. Someone was waiting, waiting. Uh, loser went off. Next one in. What did loser? Off. Yeah, and we and we just keep, we play for hours and hours. If it was raining, we go inside, do the same in the hallway with two doorways. Um, one had used the front door, one had used the dining room door, and they were opposite to each other. And you had to score with a what? pair of socks or a ball or whatever. When did you know you were you were good? Like uh, your right foot is amazing. Because like now I'm watching you. When I see you get ready to wind up, when there's space in front of you and there's space behind, I know it's getting there. Yeah. Where did that come from? I think it was just like like I just said, playing all the time. When I was playing, I was pra I was practicing, but I didn't know. Like I never intentionally practiced. But the more you play, and obviously the the old statements of 10,000 hours. So the more you practice something, the better you get it. Yeah. And I weren't even like, I weren't there thinking, I need me technique to be good at the age of five or six. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just thinking, I want to play as much football as I can. And I do, I've done that for the, for my whole life. But it's the competitiveness that makes you, if I was just doing it for fun, I wouldn't get much out of it. I wouldn't be concentrating as much. As someone's hitting it, I'd give them like a little task. I'll say, left foot. <laughs> Make sure they have to try and hit it left foot. You don't do it. I'll say, pass it, let me go. It's just them little things just all the time. Just, I don't know. It's how I, I've just, it's just all the time. Do did, did, did you think by then, do you ever think that oh, I'm going to be a footballer? You weren't even thinking it. It's just, it just made you happy. It, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it just made me happy. Where did it come from to be as, like you said, we talk about the 10,000 hours, you become a, a master. Is is that been in your kind of psyche from the time you was young that I'm just gonna practice and practice and practice? For me, it was idolizing Gerard. He was everything to me. Um, so when I'm when I was growing up, I just wanted to be him. No other way about it. I can't put it in any different ways. I wanted to. I wanted to live how we lived. I wanted everything. I wanted to play how we played. I wanted to kick a ball how we played. So when I'm there, the ball's dropping to me and I'm screaming Gerard as I'm hitting it. Um, I'm walking down the road and I see a, an empty bottle and I run up and strike it and shout Gerard. To be fair, I think a lot of kids in the city were doing the same thing. But for me, I was obsessed with trying to be like him and wanting to just copy everything he did. What was it like the first time you saw him? I know you used to, where was that you used to stand somewhere? Did you did, did you ever used to see him go past? Oh, Childhood House was two minutes, if that, from Melwood. So on the other occasion, we'd see like the fancy supercars going past our house and we know our days in football, he's going to, to train. Who is it? You know, they've got the tinted windows and stuff, so you don't really know who it is. Um, Mum's hairdressers was next door to Melwood. Like there's a block of shops right next to Melwood and, that's where she used to go. We she used to go. So when we had to go and sit in the salon while she's getting her hair done, the little if we behaved ourselves, she'd drive past Melwood, and if the, if they were training at the time, she'd stop, and we'd try and get a glimpse through a little crack in the wall, or jump on a wheelie bin and try and look over, or jump on on the on the roof of the car. Just honestly, all three of us we were just obsessed with wanting to see see the players. I remember when I was about eight, maybe yeah, about eight. There was a Champions League game and he was suspended. And at that time, playing for Liverpool now, and they gave us um, like complimentary tickets and players and amateur passes. So before the game, <coughs> we all went in there. And then he walks in and it's like, you know when you don't think someone's human? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if, if you've ever had that feeling, but because they're, they're so, you've built them up so much, you don't even feel like they're a real person. You don't feel like it's cap like it's possible to be that good at something or that amazing. You can't. It's to be that special, that talented, and then to just see him in real life. And we got a picture and stuff like that. And he was amazing with us. And yeah, it's a day that I'll never ever forget. And the feelings that I felt was incredible. You know something? It's that, that you trying to explain that gave me goosebumps. The only person that I think I met I met Pele in Brazil. And I know what you mean. I know what you mean when you say, because when I was younger, Pele, as that black, unbelievable superstar that everybody loved. I remember I met him in Germany, I was with my wife, and I lit. I felt like I was like five years old. Yeah. I, you know what? Yeah, I felt like feeling. I was gonna cry. Yeah, yeah, that's the feeling. 
And I was, yeah, but I was a big man, bro. You was eight. Yeah. I thought I was going to cry. Yeah, yeah, you just crumble. Inside, you just crumble and you... <laughs> Oh, you know, when no. your heart, literally, it's the only time I've, I cried on football pitches when I was younger because I didn't, you know, when you lost, you was yeah, gutted. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, to cry on a football pitch when you're a, a professional because the team was so good. I remember all I wanted to do was play at Anfield. I remember I even touched the Anfield thing. Really? That, yeah. Damn. This is Anfield sign. You know, the, the actual game itself. Can you remember the game? How, can you remember? What was the crowd like? There's something in the stadium. There's like, I don't know. It's like a, a, a spiritual. I don't know. It's ah. Oh. It's like when you watch like Olympiacos, you know something's gonna happen. Yeah, it's like there's there's something within Anfield on Champions League nights that the it just there's just a boost of some kind of just belief, faith. You just raw emotion, passion. There's a there's like an energy in there. And I feel it now when I'm playing in Anfield. So you see, with being right back, can you just explain to me what it's like? So your first time, you're going to play for Liverpool, you go in the dressing room and you see 66, your cheeky Under Armour boots underneath the number 66 shirt. It like takes, it's like it takes you back a little, like a step and you think, whoa, like that's my name. Because normally you don't have your own name on your shirt. Like you, you've got a player's name or, in the academy, you just got the number. So like to actually go in and have your name on your shirt was, it was nuts. It was nuts. But yeah, the, my debut, that's the that's the proudest I've, I've ever been in myself. Do you ever get a, a moment where you can look and say, I, I used to sit there when I was six, I, I was sat over that over that side there or? I like when I'm playing, I always like look up to where I used to sit. Um, like I, I can recall like exactly where I was for that first game at Anfield. I can point it out to like within ten seats to exactly where I was. Even though it was the, it's a new stand now, I can I can like picture what angle I was looking at. Who got you your first kit? What and what? Obviously, much had Gerard on it. Mm. What did it feel like when you put it on the first replica kit? It's it makes you feel like a player. <laughs> When I was a kid, I used to think I played for Liverpool. Uh, that's how I used to see you. I've got the kids. Yeah, I'm Stevie G. <laughs>